It was Lucas Foss, who was one of the teachers I had when I was a student at Tanglewood. There were four teachers, Aaron Copeland, Gunther Schuller, Yanis Sanakis, and Lucas Foss. But in some way, Lucas Foss said, there's no dangerous music anymore. And he said it in such a way to imply that uh, dangerous music is a good thing. And so that's how I read it and I began to think about dangerous moments in music. And do I have any? And if I don't, perhaps I should. And then if I'm going to, obviously I, can't, I don't feel like strong enough to leap into a whole area of danger. But uh, I would gradually, I would first think about it and then gradually. So anyway, then I remember the reading about the Rite of Springs first performance, how it was stopped and it was, it must have been dangerous in some way to create an uproar. And then I saw this wonderful uh, premiere of uh, a piece by John Cage with a huge symphony orchestra, 101 players plus other quartets and four quartets and four solo singers. And it was two separate compositions. Actually, it was more than that. It was one composition called Renga, Renge. Ah, I've forgotten the title. Yeah. Uh, it was, there was, the symphony orchestra was performing one piece. I think the music was actually pictures that they had to play. Seiji Ozawa was conducting. And there were four quartets playing four pieces independently and four singers singing pieces they wrote themselves being sung simultaneously. Anyway, uh, it, this, is, is that dangerous or not? I don't know. But uh, the, well, half the audience stormed out in a sort of a rage and the other half applauded louder than they might have otherwise. So I like that, and I don't know that it's dangerous so much. So, but then the more recent one, and practical one to demonstrate to me whether danger is good or not, has been Wayne Shorter's band. And I saw them, I'd seen them several times together, and one of the later times I saw them, I spoke to John Petitucci afterwards, and I said, you know, I can see you guys, there's some organization there, but I can't figure out what it is. And uh, uh, I said, how do you know where you are? And he said, we don't. So that was the, however it was set up, and then they don't know, this was the danger. And but the thing is, this kind of danger create, uh, you know, automatically meant that there was spontaneity, um, utmost spontaneity happening there. Uh, and, but within some kind of an organization, because there was, a, I recognized a tune or a bits of tune or whatever, and the, suddenly they would be, sound very together. There was a togetherness with the four of them, and, and it was working, and they would be smiling with joy. And then another time they would do something and it obviously didn't work, and they would be smiling with joy. So I loved the fact that, you know, to win or lose, you won. It was like win-win, even although it's lose-win. <laughs> I, I don't know how to describe it. And I don't know what Wayne or their organization was, but whatever it was, the result was immediately effective with the audience. The audience really responded to this. I, I, the, the last concert I heard was in Spain, and I don't know, in Malaga, where I live, and I don't, no of a jazz community there, but the audience was so seemed so sophisticatedly aware of what was going on, and it was very satisfying. So is that so? Now a concert with no danger, with no high degree of spontaneity. I wonder. I I like the idea of the sponta the, the danger stroke spontaneity. So one would almost think, in theory, then you shouldn't get nervous at all. One might, but I do, and I don't know why, and I don't know what to do about it, so I don't do anything.